Kelly with two E's. It's Johnny. Hey, I just wanted to make this for you. It's not going to be heavily edited because I wanted to get it to you as fast as I could, but I ran some numbers on your house, and depending on the condition, you know, I'll have a good idea of what we think we should list it for if we were to list it today. I know we're looking at June, and I'll re-pull numbers, but I just wanted to give you an idea of what I'm seeing and also show you a little bit about what I do to get houses sold and some of the value I bring. Um, you know, I pulled all the five bedroom, two and a half bath, or five bedroom, three bath houses in uh, Mill Creek. Now these are both in the falls, and I know yours on the other side, but for appraisal purposes and valuation, they're gonna be, um, they're gonna use those. So, you know, we've got this one over here that sold for 465, actually it sold for over the list price. And then this one over, and that's 408 Edward Creek Court. And then uh, Pine Log Court um, for 440. Uh, and I'll show you some stats in a little bit, but if you average, the, average those, they come out to somewhere in the mid, you know, mid mid fours. Um, I don't know what idea you had in mind, but these are both with fin uh, unfinished basements. There were some other four bedroom, two baths. I didn't include those, but those are actually about the same price too. So, you know, you, you know, depending on how your finishes look and how the condition of the property is, these will be considered comparable. So I'm flipping through these. You can see they've got a few upgrades here. That they're in pretty good shape. And again, you know, I know you had mentioned some concerns you had with the carpeting and flooring and so on and, and the overall condition, but you can see this one's been taken care of pretty well. Um, the advantage you have, if the tax records are correct, though, is yours is bigger. Yours shows 3,244 feet. These are, you know, 26. Now, that number could be wrong. These numbers are notoriously wrong. Sometimes they accidentally count part of the basement, and I don't know if they've done that here or not. So if yours is closer to these, you know, we'll be looking more toward these numbers. If you multiply that 3244 number times the average price per square foot of those sold at $179 a foot, that comes at the $580,000. Now, you're not going to get all that, but you'll get a little bit of it. And maybe it might be offset by the condition of yours. And again, I haven't seen it, haven't seen it in years, but I think you had mentioned some concerns you had. But, you know, this again, this, this one's in pretty good shape here. Uh, very similar, uh, somewhat similar layout, and, and same here. You know, I know it's not exactly the same, but it's similar enough to where it's going to be considered a comparable. Uh, this was on a, this was on a, you know, again, unfinished basement. Again, pretty decent finishes. You know, kind of dated kitchen here. Not, not terrible, but you know, dated. They painted the cabinets and so on. But I can send these to you for you to look at your own time or on your own time. But if you pull the stats here, you'll see, like I mentioned earlier. The average sale is four fifty-two, and uh, well, that's basically the same as the median. They sold at four sixty-five and four fifty-two-five. Again, these are a little bit smaller here. And I'm sorry, you can probably hear the washer in the background, but uh, yeah, look, <laughs> days on market is three days. Now I'm, I can't promise that. I'm telling people to expect a month or two, but days on market for three days, historically and even now, that's an incredible. So low period of time so again I tell people hey there's a good chance I sell it that weekend but I want you to be prepared for a few months so let me just um, yank this over here and show you some stats within the neighborhood uh, to give you an idea um, I, I like to well first of all even though things have slowed down and they certainly have Housing prices are still going up at a seven to eight percent clip year over year. A couple years ago, they were going up in like twenty, which was of course unsustainable. The median sale price in your zip code three hundred one one five is five hundred and seventy five thousand. So, the good news is, is we're going to probably be below that. And the reason why that's good news is, is you'll be priced you know lower than the competition. Again, it, it, you know, for that zip code, twelve days on market is the median. Thirty days for the average, which is still historically incredibly fast. Um, sales to list price ratio, people are listing at 500000 and they're getting 99% of it. So that's why it's really important for us to list, list right. We don't want to give your house away. We want to list at the right price. Uh, Mill Creek, median, 440. We're going to be right around there. Average is about 442. Very similar numbers. Uh, median days on market in Mill Creek is uh, six days. Uh, average days is, and that's 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 a typo. I believe that was closer to twelve. So, um, an average is always going to be higher because there's a few outliers. But you know, really, really good numbers. And again, you're looking to sell in June. I think you told me 
Anywhere near that is going to be the best time of year to sell. It's not a bad time to sell in this market, but you're going to get more and probably go quicker if you list in April, May, June as opposed to November. I just listed a really pretty house over here in Ackworth and it's sitting there because it's November. But, um, you know, just to show you a few things that I do for the listing, some of this I went over a few years back when I came to see you, but I've actually added to this. I'll pay Ron to my stager to come over and tell you exactly what to do with the house. You know, what furniture to move in, what furniture to move out, what things to take out and pack in the garage or a storage facility, what trinkets to put out, what trinkets to put away. Again, she uses your own stuff to help stage the property. And uh, I pay her well, and that comes, that's part of my listing service. It's completely free. I, I pay for that out of my own pocket. Same thing with professional photography. There's nothing more important that I do, um, or I'll say professional photography is at the cornerstone of everything I do. We want to get great photos. I'll just show you one here that I did recently. Um, these, you know, they come up with, you know, I, I make you a website. This company makes you a website. These photos, they do a fantastic job with these. Again, this is the one I just listed over in Hackworth. But you can see... Um, you know, the incredible attention to detail. I'm not going to go in there with an iPhone and, and photograph your house. I'm going to pay a professional to come and do it. And then, you know, finally, you know, the, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pay for a pre-listing appraisal. That way we price your house correctly. I think it's important to price it correctly the first time um, because if we don't price it right, it'll sit on the market. There's a stat I meant to show you earlier, but if, if it sits on, if we have to have a price reduction, it stays on the market like three months, and we want to try to avoid that. So we want to try to thread that needle, not give your house away, but we want to try to price it correctly so we get as many people in there as we can on the, the first uh, first weekend, first two weeks. Um, you know, Internet optimization is something that everybody can offer you, but when I list that on FMLS and Georgia MLS, it goes out to all the 300 real estate websites and to all, you know, It'll probably be emailed right away to three or four hundred agents for the buyers looking for properties like yours. And, and Kelly, this is going to sound so stupid, but nobody answers the phone today. And that's something I promise I'll do. I'll answer your phone calls and I'll answer every phone call from buyers. I can tell you that as a buyer's agent, there's nothing more frustrated, more frustrating and gets a buyer to give up on a property more than if their agent can't get in touch with a listing agent to answer questions about the property and so on. Buyers, when that happens, they just give up on the house. They just stop calling, and I promise not to do that to you. And then, you know, another big thing is I have the ability to reach out to agents who have buyers looking for properties just like yours. And if somebody favorites that, I give them a call, a text, and an email. It's very personal. You know, these days, everybody wants everything to be, you know, automated and all that. That's not how to sell a house. Uh, and I make sure I, I work the phones diligently. I'll market it within my market center. I'll put a huge sign out in the front yard and I'll put a warranty on the house. And of course, I'll talk to you every day if that's what you want me to do. But again, the most important things I can do is to get the house uh, staged correctly, get it looking really, really good, get professional photography, and get that pre-listing appraisal. And I pay for all that. Um, so some things that I don't do and that don't matter, um, you know, I've been doing this years now, you know, and the things that people get a warm fuzzy about, I don't do. The open houses, those are just for agents to try to get buyer and seller leads for your house or, or, or for themselves. They don't sell the house. And I used to pay for all this stuff. Facebook ads, just listed mailers, newspaper and, and magazine ads. I used to pay for all that garbage. None of it works. Um, those, those home books that people put out in the flyers and all that junk, none of that stuff matters. Um, and I promise also not to show your house to unqualified buyers. From time to time, I'll get a, a call. Somebody saw the sign. They're like, oh, we want to see the house. Every time, without fail, every time, if I ask for a pre-approval letter or a proof of funds letter, they vanish. They're not serious buyers. They're lurky-loos, and um, they never end up buying. So I promise not to. Bring somebody in your house that I don't know, and you know what happens is they hit me over the head and steal all your stuff. We don't want all that. But uh, so that's what I do to get houses sold. Um, I deal with the attorney. I'll let you read this on your own time. But I deal with the attorney, the other agent, the appraiser, the inspector, all this stuff. That way you don't have to. And it's I, I offer a discount, which I'll talk about in a minute. 
but it's a full service listing, completely full service. Now, uh, my office hours, I make myself very, very available to my sellers. I'm open for business just about all the time, six to six. Uh, when I say out of the office on Sunday, I'll take a phone call, of course, I just, I don't work outside of the house. And even these hours, you know, if I know an offer's coming in past six, I don't ignore it. So, um, now the commission is uh, five and a half percent. If I help you later buy, I'll drop that to five percent. Because you had mentioned that at some point renting and then buying something later on. I'll give you an additional half a percent off of that. I'll give you a, 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 a rebate on that. And that this this discount in this case is going to end up being like four thousand over four thousand dollars, and that's a completely full service discount listing. I'm doing that because I've known you so long, and uh, not because it's not full service. So, and what I like to do is show how the breakdown of this goes. Three percent of that's going to go to the buyer's agent for bringing us a buyer and showing the property. I'll probably never show your house. It's just that the way it works. I take that five and a half percent and I never discount the buyer's agent's commission. So I give them 3% and then two and a half percent or 2% in your case comes back to Atlanta communities. And then about a point and a half of that goes to me. So what I want you to see is that five and a half percent. I'm not keeping all that. And most of it goes to the buyer's agent and then my brokers because they, they I have to pay them. And then about a point to a point and a half comes to me. And again, I'll do it initially at five and a half percent, and then when I go to help you buy, I'll give you the additional half a percent off the purchase of that next house, and that'll help pay for some closing costs and so on. Now, with regard to value, I believe all these automated values are high on your house, um, but I'm showing them to you because people look at them. Uh, Zillow has you at 515. I think that's because of the square footage. Um, AVM, which is a valuator that realtors use, has you at 485. I think this one's closest to real. And then UWM, United Wholesale Mortgages Valuator, they're the biggest lender in the world. They have an automated value. They have you at almost 600,000. I, I think this one and this one are a little high. This one's close. I think you're somewhere around that 450 range, depending on condition. Um, you know, a lot of people tell me, well, my tax records are this. Tax records are not an indication of value whatsoever. A lot of times they're arbitrary and completely incorrect. Um, you know, a lot of times, you know, whoever buys your house is probably going to have to borrow money to do it. They're going to have to get a mortgage, in which case it'll have to be appraised by their lender. And a lot of times people will want me to send the appraiser homes in the neighborhood that went up for sale recently, actives or coming soon. He or she can't use those at all. They all have to, and they can't even use pending sales. They have to use comparables that have sold. So, um, you know, people say, well, you know, the valuation came in low. Somebody up the street just listed for 500. They can list for anything they want to. It doesn't mean they're going to sell at it. Uh, what indicates value is uh, the sold properties. So, um, so yeah, again, there's the, the uh, I've showed you that before. But, you know, just some things, you know, and I'll go over some of this. Rhonda, who's the stager, when the time comes, we'll go over all this stuff with you, but things to do to get your house ready. You want that house looking as close to a model home as possible. I'm not saying you have to do any repairs or anything like that, but um, I will tell you that you need to declutter the heck out of it and deep clean it. Those are the two biggest returns on your investment, deep cleaning it, depersonalization, and taking your personal pictures down and decluttering it. You know, if you've got a living room just full of stuff, not, not 90 75% of that stuff needs to come out. You need like a couch, a coffee table, and a TV or one other small piece of furniture. And, and again, I'll go over that with you as soon as we get closer. The, the things that sell a house in this market are the, the marketing, which I've, I've, I've demonstrated that I do with the photos and all that, and then condition and price. If the house sits there for three, four weeks, and we don't have any offers or a few showings, the only way to move the needle is to change the price. That means we're overpriced. So, again, price, uh, condition, and, um, well, there's location is the other one, but we can't do anything about that. So, um, anyway, just wanted to make that for you. I think I've covered everything, but I'll speak in more detail tomorrow or when, sorry, Thursday when I come see you. But, um, you know, let's just take a quick look at these um, again, you know. 
I think these are pretty comparable properties. And uh, just so you know, I'll list at any price you want me to. And we can go down from there. But again, it is important. If we list it too high, a lot of times we end up trying to chase a ball down a hill and, and we, we never catch it. We end up getting less than we would have originally if we had listed it correctly. So Anyway, hey, thanks for the opportunity. Thanks for letting me come to see you all this week. And we will talk at you soon. Bye-bye.